I plotted a challenging three day route in the Lake District to help me reconnect with nature and to push my body over some of the highest mountains in the UK. The weather was unforgiving at times but it did little to dampen my spirits as I soaked in the glorious scenery and let Mother Nature do as she's always done. Join me as I take on some of the highest peaks the UK has to offer all the while making time to appreciate the natural beauty and remote wilderness of the English Lake District. Zero condensation this morning. Oh, good morning, by the way. I think it's because there was a little bit of a draft. The night before, it must have just been still as. So that's good news. We've got a dry tent. Clouds are looking ominous. <laughs> Just been doing some stretches. It's the elevation, mate. It's going up. <laughs> well, that's what elevation is. It's going over these passes. Really does your legs in a bit. So it's not like a normal... I think I said this yesterday or the day before. It ain't like a normal hike like a, that ain't got too many leg pumpers, like the South Downs way. Mile for mile, it is a lot longer. So a 50 mile doing this is worth at least 100 mile doing South Downs where that's final. And I'm off up here into clouds, look at that. It's gonna be wet, it's gonna be cold. But we're gonna do it over Great Gable, through Windy Gap, down to Honister. And then I won't have too far to go. It's probably gonna take me all day to do it. Cause I was gonna do a figure of eight, but <laughs> no, I've underestimated uh, the amount of time and the amount of leg work that's going into it i don't want to break myself pack up the gray man let's look at it just like it could be that over there like that see that rock there could be that it's very inconspicuous you'd think like when you first got it when i first got it i was like oh gray that's going to sort of stick out a bit but in lakes it doesn't because you do have like gray rocks dotted about everywhere but you know it blends in rather nicely and i'm just putting off getting out <laughs> i'm just putting off starting walking up this monster <laughs> right come on it's about quarter past half past eight something like that it's time to get going come on <laughs> no sign i was ever there come on he's just put a stone in a basket <clears throat> fair enough Oh, you push it? No. Lift it? Oh, he's cacked it all over the place here. I saw it thing basket and I thought, that's amazing. But the whole thing is just falling to pieces. Look at that. It doesn't even supposed to go that way, is it? It's supposed to go the other way. My word. Sorry. Sorry. Shit, this. It's naffed it. It used to be good. It's just cacked it. This ain't doing out now. Sorry, mate. Sorry to bring you that. <laughs> Up into Mordor. Up in the clouds now. And the temperature's dropped. <laughs> Which I'm quite thankful of because that is a serious hike up there, mate. And I'm not even nowhere near halfway. It's intimidating. It is intimidating. But as long as you've got knowledge, decent equipment and a decent level of fitness, you can get up here in mist and have a little look around, no problem. But just a word of warning for the for the like weekend warriors and that. If you see people doing it online, you think, oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and you'll end up like that couple on the Scarfell or that bloke on Scarfell then just it in it sometimes isn't as easy as it looks it can gas you out so if you got to the top of here and you were like oh your fitness levels just shat it that's you stuck in a whiteout possibly on your tod if you've come on your own so i would say like knowledge is is paramount you know you you need to know your fells you need to know your first stage you need to know your you how to predict the weather and stuff like that and Equipment is important, obviously, for all eventualities. I don't have a water jacket, but do as I say, not as I do. 
and a base level of fitness can get you out of all sorts of scrapes because it's good here, here and in legs. <laughs> Yeah, crack on. Oh mate, you're on path. The only path. I'm gonna need you to just budge over a little bit, mate. Come on. That's it, good lad. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to be taking a false false step up here. It's all this clobber. So it's like you sort of put one step forward and it drags you back half a foot as well. I'm sure it would be Lovely views from up here, but I can't really bring you much. I'm just putting a shift in. And uh, hopefully, well, maybe we can break through the clouds because we do get pretty high. <sighs> There's a cairn there, look, that looks like something. You can only just make stuff out. This should be the middle of the pass and then I'm gonna go right, apparently. Nice 360 panoramic views. There's a big steep climb up to the summit. But what I'm thinking is it's just a complete whiteout and I'm gutted about it. I wanted to get some views, so my options are either sit it out behind a rock and hope the weather clears, but then it could get worse, rains could come. Or I plan a route along the side and try to get a bit of low ground and hopefully it clears down there. Oh, I'm taking refuge in these rocks. I'm out of that wind. I'm gonna put my merino wool leggings on. They're only real thin ones. I just got, these are like my summer ones that I just sleep in sometimes. It gets a bit chilly, but they've come in handy on this trip just to take that edge off of the wind. Oh, full of holes as well, mate. Is that anything? What's the point? It's all right getting super lightweight, super thin and all that in it, but if it just shits itself, what's the point? I forgot to bring my uh, down jacket up north, so I just got what I've got. But uh, maybe a porridge, like a warm porridge or uh, a viewsly. A viewsly might uh, warm me up from the inside and give me the, uh, give me the beans I need. Plus, if I cook this fusely up, by the time I've eaten it, this might have cleared. I'm running low on liquids and all I've got is my uh, electrolytes. Uh, my electrolyte tablet that I put into water, so I'm just going to boil that up and then have a fusely. I don't know if it's going to be mental or what, or what, but we're going in. It's probably not going to be nice, is it? Let's be honest. Wee Warm electrolytes with some views, Lee. That's what it's come to. Because I'm hunkered down, aren't I? And it's survival. And so, you know, can't see it being that mad. It's <laughs> tropical flavor. I mean, it's fruit muesli anyway, isn't it? And it's a fruit. The electrolytes fruity anyway, so. And I'll be getting electrolytes in my muesli, so I mean, this could be a revelation, who knows? Probably not, but we're there anyway, any, we're any port in a storm and it's, look, I can't see anything. The decision has been made to sit it out, man. I'm just gonna cuddle me views, Lee, and if I get too cold, sleeping bag will come out, go around me like a shawl. <laughs> And that's that, isn't it? I end up like that guy who's just like, fuck it, about rescue. Hello, I'm tired. Help, could you come and get me? I've, I've used electrolytes in my uh, Viewsly. It doesn't taste as good as it usually as it usually does. Can you come get me and take me to the pub, please? Well, she's spluttering. Wow, oh, better go. There you go, look. Brand new. Got a warm Viewsly on go. Leggings on. This round me, I'm warm. Sit it out for a bit and see if it clears up. Because it would be nice to get some uh, shots of the top, wouldn't it? And be able to see the views from top of Great Gable. So we'll sit just below the summit and we'll just, uh, well, I'll just be nice and toasty and warm. I've got no signal or out like that. I'll just be in my thoughts, which is nice. I would, normally I would be in my thoughts whilst taking in the views, but. 
these rocks are quite nice. So who says you need, you know, you, you, people pay extra, like people pay more to have the, a down quilt instead of a sleeping bag, but this does, this is a quilt. If you just unzip it, it's a quilt, but with a hood on it that can change into a sleeping bag if you want. I mean, I've never had a, a down quilt as sleep, um, instead of a sleeping bag, so I can't really, I can't really uh, speak on it properly, but as far as I can see, and if anyone knows any different, please tell me, but surely just like an unzipped sleeping bag is as good, because it still goes round you, you've got the option of turning it into a sleeping bag if you want, it's got hood on it, what is the advantage, I mean, where is it just weight alone? Uh, maybe I'll get one, test it out. But for now, my sleeping bag's all I need. Look at it doing the trick. <laughs> oh, let's get stuck into this viewsly. Why is it even out there? It should be in here. Warming me up. British summer, eh? <laughs> British summer. Wrapped in a sleeping bag with merino wool layers on, hugging a real termat. Yay. Get stuck into it. Put a bit too much liquid in. Too much electrolytes in it. I think it's a bit sloppy. Sloppy. These are mint. These. These are probably the best things to do. The Viewsleys. Look at that. So much fruit and all sorts of clobber. <laughs> there you go. Whole grain wheat, oats, raisins, pineapple chunks, cinnamon. Coconut oil, honey. All right, it's good. Tastes good. Mm. I've got my uh, Garmin InReach Mini. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, I jumped out my skin there. Did you yeah, I was trying to get a weather forecast for, from my little. Foggy. Ah, uh, foggy. I think it's just foggy. Yeah, I'm heading up to the top of Great Gable, but you'll be going straight over. No, I can't see anything. It says, I mean, I looked at those peaks and it says you could climb them. I thought, well, there's no point in this. Can't even see where they are. No, 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 that's why I, I was sat there, just had a meal waiting for the, waiting for something to change, but it doesn't look like it's gonna. Okay, well, best of luck. Yeah, thank you. You do have a map, do you? Huh? You do have a map. Yes, I've got the, um, I've got the guide, yes. Sorry, I'm not just following you. I'm asking the way I'm going up there and... Up Great Gable. Well, I'll be going immediately left up here, and I think you'll be going straight on. I think I'll go straight over that. Yes, it's up there. It's at Arthur Kenton, something looming in the gloom. Yeah. How many days have you given yourself to do it? Well, I haven't really, because I'm retired, so you can just sort of, you know, you tell your family, I'll be back for yeah. a couple of weeks. <laughs> be at least two weeks, it might be, it could be three. And I'm thinking that, I'm thinking actually, why am I trying to do it? The, my guide does it in 13 days, which I'm on track for that. Um, I thought actually it doesn't matter if I set a couple of days extra at the end. That's and it. And that really cuts your daily mileage down if you give yourself a couple of extra days. Yeah, that's it. You can really knock the miles on the I think I did it in about nine days, but I was I was uh, <laughs> I was gunning it. <laughs> but I'm going for it. <laughs> Just. That lady was doing the coast to coast. I says, where are you going? She says, oh, Rostwick. I was like, you're not. You're going the wrong way. Whew. I said, so uh, she only had the Cicero guidebook. And she'd come off the book. Lost. Nothing else, no, no. So I look, let her look at my OS map and gave her the right directions how to get back on track. I even said I would walk with her to get her to Honest to Slate Mine. She seemed all right. I said, you can come up at the top of Great Gable as well with me, but not having that, <laughs> definitely not. She says, oh, I'm glad I met you because otherwise she'd have been off that way in these conditions. It's not what you want. Ugh. I can't remember what I've seen before, but yeah, I've got my InReach Mini. You can get <sighs> forecasts on that, and you can text people. Like if you, you, know, you let them know you're okay if you, if you don't have a signal. 
I don't need to do that because I'm only hiking for a few more hours and I'll have signal. Uh, but yeah man, this is, can be an unforgiving place. Especially if it's your first long distance hike and you, you've only got a little guidebook. And you come off the book, you're done. Because you can't, there's no topography, you can't you can't look at the the fells and say, well that's that, so I'll go this way. You can't see anything. Woo. As you can see. <laughs> Way. It's steep. Some bits are pretty like, pretty hairy, but it's mainly as well because you can't see over the edge. Oh, oh no. It's testing me out like, it's testing minerals. Oh. It's an adventure. It's an adventure, all right. I think it's straight up there, isn't it? A bit of rock climbing. Oh, well, it's a scramble either way, so I'll have to put you away. I've got to climb up that. To put hiking poles away because it's a <coughs> it's a scramble. Whew. No sign at summit <coughs> through the clouds. Not, not for faint hearted or faint legged. <laughs> John Barlow, big up. <sighs> I think I can make out more of a hill this way. I can hear people. <laughs> hear someone, hello! <laughs> oh, here it is. All right, lads. <laughs> That was that. <laughs> the summit of Great Gable. Sorted. And now I believe, I mean, it's hard to tell. And I, it'd be tough, man, with just a paper map. I'm glad I've got my OS maps. And I believe it's this way into the soup. We're out on Windy Gap. I scrambled down there. And despite it's, it's not really living up to its name right now. It's quite calm. And then up there <laughs> into more of the mist. <laughs> Sorry, I can't bring you any views. It is a shame because I'm sure the views are stunning from around here, but Mother Nature's drawn the curtains and said, nah, mate, you're not having it. So we'll just bat on into the fog. <laughs> you can tell which way the wind blows predominantly from that direction. Bit of an update for you. 
now it's changed. <laughs> it's still pea soup. Which is a shame, it's good because you know, I'm just focusing on what's in front of me and it's quite meditative, I've got to concentrate, it's nice and it's good to be out here but the feeling of like, the feeling of the vastness is lost because it's just all closed in. So I, I can't take any photos of nice views or show you guys or even just whatever. There's nothing to be had in that sense. So obviously I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being able to jump on much because <laughs> it ain't like I'm not getting excited over views and being like, oh, I'll show you. It's just basically very windy and thick fog. Yeah, so. We'll see what it's like when we drop down. It's opened up. <laughs> Quick for the views. Quick. Oh. That was cool, mate. Just all of a sudden it went from thick soup and it just so quickly just like blew off. Like, and it just, everything just got lighter and went HD. And then it revealed this. Ah, oh. like Mother Nature just slipping her blouse off. Quite spectacular, and my because my eyes had been in fog for so long, it was like Whoa! it's like being born again. It's bright, I can see things. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Mother Nature. You're the you're the queen. There's haystacks, fleet with pike, buttermere. It's all down there. beautiful oh, I mean it's coming in again and it look behind me but I'll take it this is the first bit of clear sky I've had all day today I wonder if it'll let me have it just for for the final stretch of the top bit down to Honister oh, even if it doesn't this has been good hasn't it this has been good Oof, got a fair old way to go. And just like that, shows other people. Finish your drinks. It's time to leave, look at that. <laughs> All them views off there, now look. Pea soup again. Oh well, that was good. It's almost like, well I'm glad I saw it, but it's one of them where like, Here's what you could be having. Here's what you could have won. It makes me think of all the views that we've uh, that we've missed out on today because of the fog. And now look back to this. <laughs> Thank you. Oh well. Oh, I'm making good time anyway. Over these next few, I don't mind. I can't see anything anyway. But off to. Uh, oh, is it going to open up again? Live. Sort of. Honestly, mate, it's something else when it does it. Oh, uh, yeah, making good time over here, down to uh, Honister, and then back down to Rostwick. Now, my plan was to do a figure eight, but I don't need it. I've got what I wanted. I've had a right good laugh. Also, when you plot miles in the Lake District, and it isn't the same as plotting miles elsewhere. Because you've got to take into account the elephant. Oh no! <laughs> there she is. Live. Live and direct. Anyway. Come on. Yeah, you've got to take into account the elevation. Which on this trip, I mean, as I say, I will leave my route. I'll plot it into my OS maps and I'll leave a link below and I'll just write a little blurb about it and stuff and if you want to check it out and do it yourself you can not to do with OS maps like I'm not sponsored or anything I just thought it'd be a good um, it's good sometimes it's alright me saying oh, I'm just out in Lake District 
And when I'm going for like solo camps, like one night, is I don't like to stay where I am because I don't want to put unnecessary pressure on on a specific place. But I feel like things like this, when it's it's a beast of a hike, then yeah, well, I want people to do it. And you you're not going to camp in the same places as me necessarily, or do what I did. You just use it as a guide, and you uh, bed down whenever you want. Almost this late mine down there and then right off the end of this nab down this valley through these trees you see these like a few houses down there that's Rosthwaite maybe another couple of hours away but I'm so happy that the the clouds cleared even if it's just for this little bit so I'm gonna sit here finish whatever electrolytes I've got all that not much at all, but a cup's worth because I'll be able to restock at the slate mine ah, so I'm going to sit and enjoy these vistas Be here at my shoulder Be here in my side Be here when the cold night falls And in the morning light Be here in the autumn When all the colors call Be the burning memory Of all the summers gone Nice little stop there at Honest Slate Mine. Had a cup of coffee and a sani. And away. It's maybe about three miles. Oh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> maybe two or three miles down into Rostweight now. But it's beautiful. It's turned into a beautiful day. And a wonderful way to end. My waffle meter's going down. Can't really. My brain's a bit dead, <laughs> so a bit knackered, but uh, I'm just going to zone out and enjoy this final stretch. When I was young, my daddy said, gotta keep one eye open in your bed, cause there's a time coming when the devil gonna come for you, so my trigger fingers stay prepared, I've got my weapon and I got my prayers, cause if you don't run, back in Rostway. What an adventure. Whew, feeling it in my legs a bit. We're feeling it good in here. Very good. How do I get out of here? 
stuck amongst all these beautiful houses. How do I sum it up, man? Some highlights, mate. Particularly today when the when the clouds gave way to that beautiful scenery after I've had what it felt like was, you know, when you get kid well you weren't there, but <laughs> well you might. If you get kidnapped in SAS or whatever and they put that they put the black hood over your head and lead you around, it felt like that. I felt like I'd been kidnapped by the mist and then yoink the yoinked off and at first it's like what the it's almost too much. And it was just beautiful, everything was in HD. It was uh, one of the greatest times ever. <sighs> Am I lost here? I mean, there's worse places to be lost, but I'm a bit knackered to sum it up, mate. So I think I'll, I'll take a few days to let it sink in and then I'll get back to you. I appreciate you watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Au revoir for now. Map time. Here we go, the third and final map time. Everybody's favourite time. Right, I woke up here, zero condensation, so happy campers. And off I went. Back down here to join the path and up. And that is an understatement when I say up because this <laughs> felt like I was climbing for the majority of the day. Very steep up here, loose rock onto here and then I climbed up a little bit and then I found some rocks around here and took refuge waiting for the weather to change but it didn't so I carried on now up here I would have, I would have had some lovely views across the valley but it was just as you know it was a whiteout and this was tough going there was a few scrambly areas as well where I had to climb to the top of Great Gable. There was a couple of lads sat at the summit of Great Gable, so I had a bit of a chat with them. And on we went down here, very steep down here. Through Windy Gap, which this time wasn't that windy. And along. It's beautiful hiking, and I would have had amazing views either side of the ridge, but unfortunately not today on we went so this is the way that I sent that to the woman that I talked to I said if you can get down here you can sort of uh, there you go onto this trail and round which takes you back on the coast to coast I'm sure she was fine this is where the clouds opened up for me an amazing moment past grey knots and then I took a little detour down here Found a little nab and uh, sat there for a while and took in the views once the clouds had fully cleared. Back up, on my way down, on the road a little bit and then there's a path at the side. My brain was shot to bits at this point so not much talking to be done. We just time lapsed our way through it. Up here, this is actually the coast to coast goes through here but I'd look on my OS map and decided to come this way. And through this woodland, and I'm glad I did because it was beautiful. Past this little campsite, through the fields, through the houses, and we're back to Rostwaite. And there it is, the Lakeland Three Passes is a tough yet rewarding slog through some breathtaking scenery. I learned that having waterproofs would have been nice, and maybe a warm jacket would have made me a little bit more comfortable. But although kit is important, I learned that there's no substitute for physical fitness and a good mental attitude. They say knowledge is power, and that's true, but there's a lot to be said for having a decent engine and being able to push your body and mind beyond your comfort zone, because that's where you'll find real growth. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.